All right, so I'm gonna give you three tips to make your environment look better. Basically, what we can use in AAA games to, to make environments. So let's get started. Tip number one is basically color. You see, I have my thing here and, you know, I can move things around and so things of that nature, um, but I have put some decals here. These two decals. Let me hide them for a moment. Uh, you can see how different our scene is. If we take a look at this one, you can see like everything, this color and this color and this color and this color. It's all very monochromatic. So what you wanna want to do is add some decals or add some color in any way, any shape or form. And you can see that our scene automatically balance out, like all starts to feel much better. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to put the saturated colors everywhere. But when you have a very monochromatic scene, it's always good to have some saturated colors to balance it out. So, the second tip is the visual guidelines. So, what are visual guidelines? Basically are lines, imaginary lines that you can find in your scene. And why is this important? It's because we can tell the player where to look at. So, for example, we have this pad, and then we have this light, so our eyes pointed here, and you have this curve shape that points here, and then this part. So basically our eyes are pointing at this area and also this curve here and then we go here and then we have like a line here. This is basically a blocker, another blocker so that your eyes go here and then pops. It's like a ping pong ball, uh, ping pong ball like boom, 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 boom. And what you want to do is basically create these lines. So these lines, because in the real world, like if you're painting, you're using lines, but in the real world, lines are created by the difference between lining and shadow. So whenever you have a form, you will create a shadow. And if I move my light around, you will see I have different, different shadows. Okay. So lining is very important for this kind of guideline. And of course, if you have a path or something like that, you can definitely choose things like this to guide the player where he want to go and then eventually reach the destination. Because the objective of, of the environment is just to guide one player from one objective to another without feeling, you know, overwhelmed or frustrated. So the third tip is scale. You can see that I have a lot of different elements here. I have small ones, which is my foliage. I have some trees here, some big rocks, and some bigger rocks here. So what happens is that if we only see this element, we, we have one big rock here, and then we have a smaller version of this one here. And look what we have here. It's basically another version. So let's move our lights around. So we can see better. Uh, you can see here that if we take a look at this one, so you have a big shape here, right? You have another big shape here, okay, all this part. Then you have a smaller shape, medium shape here, something like that. And finally, you have these small rocks here. All these rocks are basically smaller. So what you have here is basically a transition between something that is super big to something that is very small. And this smooth transition is what will make your environment look much better. So those are the three tips, basically color, do not have a very monochromatic scene. 
visual guidelines, place your elements so you can create a path to tell the player where to look at. And a scale, as you can see, you have big, medium, small elements, super small elements here. So my scene looks more grounded and complete. And one more tip, let's let's give you one more tip. Like this is the just give you an extra tip. You see like this scale of this rock here. You, and when the player see this rock, automatically compares between different objects to try to imagine the scale. Often in games we have the perspective challenge that we need to tell the player that this distance is actually far far than the player thinks. So the way we do that is if we want to create a rock like this, we can put it here, okay? And this one basically is bigger, but what we want to do is scale this down. So let's scale this one by three, okay? And let's move it out. As uh, you can see, you have a teeny, tiny rock here. If I hide this one, you can see that actually the player says, okay, like this is, this rock is the size. And this one is the same here. Let's increase the size a little bit by maybe 1.2. Okay, so this one is the same one. Therefore, um, this distance is very far. This is how the brain works, and this is how we trick players to check our games and really immerse them into having a really, really nice environment. So, if you like these tips and this video, share it with your friends. Let us know in the comments which kind of topic you would like to see, and we make make a video out of it. And if you are making a game, especially an RPG game, Check the links in the description to get some help. We have some free resources in our website. And I'll see you in the next one.